and the Chiefs respond with the big hits of their own. Now, good Chiefs support at the stadium today. Let's go. News, views, and behind-the-scenes chats from Sandy Park. This is the Exeter Chiefs podcast with Rhino and Bentos. Welcome. Thanks for finding us on YouTube again. Uh, this is the Exeter Chiefs podcast. I'm Rhino. He is... Chubby. Yep, welcome. And we've scared Alec and Harry away. I know, I know. It's it's a quiet afternoon in the office. Uh, they're, they're, uh, they're coaching tonight. We're recording on a Monday, so they're, they're not with us tonight because they do some coaching. I can't remember which team it is, but it all sounds very exciting. Lots to talk about. We've got uh, a new guest joining us on the on the show tonight, Chubby. Looking forward to uh, that. Emma, a rugby expert. Someone who actually knows what they're talking I'm about. Like me and you, well, she's unbiased. She's going to give us an overview of the whole league. So she'll be joining us on the phone soon. We are going to stick with the mystery guest. We did this last week with the boys. Yeah. Yes. And I've got someone for you tonight. This will be toe curling. The only clue I'm giving you is sausages. Right. Okay, so have a, have a think. But uh, we've got some audio from Rob Baxter, Jack Yandel, and Ian Whitten for in a moment to go over what happened on the weekend. We're also going to talk Jack Noll. But firstly, in 30 seconds, are you ready, Chubby? Yes, I am. Let's go. Okay, so Ian Witten Brace, uh, just a fantastically robust player. Sam Hill, way above uh, the the rest of the pack and a well-deserving man of the match. And Ben Moon's work rate must get a mention as well. But where did we let it go? The stats, we made 422 metres to Gloucester's 357. We passed it 217 times compared to 67 for them. I just don't know where that one got away. I, and at the end, the, poor Steno. The, I know. The, the kick. I we know. were sat there. You know, it's coming, draw, and there's so much pressure That's on the that. pressure. You can't even imagine what that's like. No, And goodness, I wouldn't want no. to ask him either, especially after the game. He was in the zone, wasn't yeah. he? Yeah. Uh, yeah. It, however, from a fan's point of view, I thought we were the better team. Yes, and, for and, parts of the game. And I know people were frustrated and you may mm. disagree with me, dear listener. However, I really felt that we showed that we've got something. Coming back mm. from, what was it, 14 to 27? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, We normally give that away. Yeah, at half time, 14-17 down, we missed the opportunity to go quick with a kick for a penalty and then have three or four minutes to really drive the pressure home before the half and, and a, a score then the second half would have been a completely different beast. I think the the foot in touch that led yeah. to the try really made... Well, the ref even said sorry, didn't he? Yeah, exactly. But I, I think the players just got on with it. But I think Sandy Park subdued then. And I didn't hear it come back to life from the fans last until seven minutes. last seven minutes. Yeah. And then there was a massive tomahawk chop started at the East Terrace South. That that kicked off in the West Grandstand as well. And it's very rare yeah. by the media that we get involved. But I didn't, I couldn't stop myself. Yeah, but, exactly. Oh, come yeah. On, you, you know, and we're here for, for one reason. Well, a lot of the media are there because they're independent. I'm not. No, quite. Um, it was just electric. I know. And then, but, that, but that transfers so quickly down onto the pitch. And, and it was only that last seven minutes that everything started to transform with the crowd. And, and, I think the game needed more of that earlier on to really to get the spark and the prickliness around Sandy Park. The ironic thing is, though, we come out of that game having won 3-2 because they mm. get, what, the uh, two points for the draw. Mm. We get the four tries bonus point. Yeah, and it was a draw, better so We get three points. So really, we dropped two points. We should have had five because mm. we nearly were there. But, but, but let's have a quick listen to Rob Baxter post-game. To be able to come back with, what, about 15 minutes, maybe less on the clock, to score three times, to draw the game, shows a fantastic amount of character. And I've actually said to the players, that was probably the most characterful 10 minutes from as I've seen this season. We'll go straight from Rob and let you hear Jack Yendall. We need to get them to trust us. We need, we need to be going out and, and putting a performance on the pitch that, that makes the crowd get excited. And we, we want to kind of build the emotion in the stadium so that the crowd has something to cheer on. Um, you know, again, it's very much getting our bits right and, and really pushing the performance. And now this man... He gets me right here. His emotion and his voice at any point. Mm. Um, he could do voiceover work. It's Ian Whitten. You can't train character, and we showed it there at the end. You know, we showed our, our fighting qualities, and we'll need that going forward because we have a few things to fix. You know, we need to turn up and, and, and start being a bit more honest with ourselves. That we're not quite where we should be, and we're not playing the way you know we'd like to be. So it's up to us to fix it. We'll get Emma on in a minute to have a look at the uh, the rest of the teams around the Aviva Prem at uh, the weekend. But firstly, let's talk the bomb that Rob dropped 
in the press conference. Mm. Have you heard about this? Jim? I have. I've heard. I've heard the quote as well. The and... Guardian had it. The Echo had it in minutes. Yeah. Uh, the local stations have uh, have got it this week. Um, uh, now playing the audio. Let's have a quick listen. He's got a pretty significant tear of his quad. He did it on the Monday training with England. To be fair, he was probably loaded in a way that we wouldn't have loaded him, um, especially with the fact that he'd only played his first bit of rugby back uh, at the weekend against Northampton. Um, and I suppose more disappointingly, he was sent back to us with a report that they couldn't find any significant damage and that it was just a, a bit of loading and he was a bit sore. And obviously we, we brought him back and fortunately we scanned it and we found a, a pretty significant tear, like you're talking nine or ten centimetre tear in his quad. So... A nine to ten centimetre tear in the quad. I wish we yeah. had one of the players here to ask them kind of what the rehabilitation will look like on exactly. that. Exactly. And, and also what the, the the implications to performance that is, you know, uh, how debilitated are you at the point? Because I think what I read into that and the way that, I mean, Rob's the most tactful person there is going. Doesn't and, normally go there. Exactly. And, but so to, he's clearly annoyed. And and I think he feels let down by the England camp. I think I... I As were I, wasps and bath. Was well, it broken jaw, broken but leg? That, but those are accidents. I think what's galling here is that Jack was returned to Exeter, nothing wrong. He's fine. He's just, you know, got a bit of a stiff leg. Rob got it scanned and his men, you know, saw that there was a significant tear. And I think he feels that his backroom staff would have looked after that player better in light of how little game time he's had and and what sort of uh, strength and you know conditioning was needed for that individual at that time. And I, I think he feels let down by the system rather than anything else. This is the Exeter Chiefs podcast. New feature. Uh, when we're in the studio, we're sometimes with players, sometimes it's me, Chubby, Bentos. We're a bit biased, aren't we? We are very. Yeah, I mean, we, <laughs> we love one so. team and one team only. We only really want to talk Chiefs. I mean, th- th- there's only one team in the Premiership, really, to me. Um, we thought it would be good to start broadening our horizons and learning a little bit about the other clubs in the team and paying a bit of respect to them. So we welcome Emma. Emma, you've got the coolest job, haven't you? I have to say, I do rather love my job and not too many... Well, some people can say that, but I genuinely love what I do. It's mixing up, well, watching a lot of rugby, reporting on it from a writing point of view, uh, my blog Out on the Full, as well as for the BBC and Sky Sports, and then also doing a spot of audio with TalkSport and some social media as well um, among some of the uh, bigger accounts for, for European rugby. So it, it's pretty... Well, it's very rugby focused and I have to say I do love it. Um, Starting with Sale Bath, big scoreline for Bath. What did you make of that? Yeah, they were very good for their win, I thought. There was actually a lot more um, defensive effort that went into the victory than the scoreline suggests. They they showed a bit of uh, what I would call Saracen's colours in, in their in their try scoring defence and it would dis- their the intensity of their defence that really then led to them being able to score the points. From an independence point of view, what did you make of Chiefs versus Gloucester? And you can be honest, we, we you know we we are obviously biased, but we won't be offended. Oh, well, I know that Rob Baxter said after there was some good, some bad, and some ugly in there. Um, I think very pleased to get the result, especially given uh, how many points down they were with, with about ten minutes to go. Um, and I think overall probably will be a bit disappointed with the eighty minutes as a whole, but very pleased to come back and get a draw. Quinn's Saints, 20 to 9. Again, Northampton were one that, that didn't really uh, look like mounting a true attack on the score once they, they'd gone behind. Um, and it was a bit disjointed from both sides, actually. There was quite a lot of handling errors. But Harlequins uh, will be very pleased with, with their efforts. I thought Adam Jones had a monster of a mm. game. So Joe Marler was ruled out before Mark Lambert then got injured early doors so Adam Jones had to go as long as his lungs would carry him and, and fair dues he nearly finished the entire game and um, and was on the wrong side of the scrum so I think that that kind of epitomised Harlequins' heart in this match mm. uh, on home tour they really needed the victory and they pulled it out of the bag Tigers really let it go against uh, Warriors with their scoreline again it was one of those that the Richard Cockrell said it, it wasn't a complete performance but it was a, a step in the right direction and, and in, you know, in all honesty, Leicester are going to put a tick in the box, say, job done, bonus point win, let's move on to Europe. What do you make of um, of Bristol going so far down in the first half on their game, but then coming back to only lose by five points? Not, not, yeah, not great to have another loss, but, but, but showing something there in that second half. 
Exactly, as you say, that they, they showed in that second half that they can be competitive, but it needs to be for 80 minutes. In round two, we saw them give Northampton a big lead, and, and they've done it again, and this lesson has to be learned. And I'm not sure, you know, why it's a slow start. I mean, obviously, the first try was an interception try, which is, you know, always, no one ever aims to go out and give away an interception, and, and then you're on the back foot. So they need to learn the lesson and somehow start the first half as they seem to do the second 40 of a number of matches because if they don't then it could become difficult and the big Sunday fixture uh, was uh, Saracens Wasps and an interesting scoreline for what we've seen really a, 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 a all firing on all cylinders die young performance yeah it was and, and Wasps actually were, were rabbits in the headlights Saracens they did what they do best which is to physically dominate teams and you know, strangle them from that aspect um, and gain their points from that. Was lost the gain line totally. And that was a surprise when you have the likes of you know, Nathan Hughes on their side. He certainly, you know, Billy Vinopolo got the better of his opposite number. And across the board, Saracens did that. Now, there was a, a lovely bit of magic from Danny Cipriani for Wasps, and that, and that was a highlight. But overall, they looked a little bit overawed, and they didn't really know what to do when the pressure was truly on from mm. Saracens. Um, and that, that was, you know, that's what, how the result therefore panned out and Saracens will be very very confident and comfortable with their performance Jamie George came off the bench and made a huge impact Maru Otoje was immense but but somebody like Brad Barrett also his leadership was fantastic he had a huge game and uh, and often doesn't get all of the praise so they'll be very pleased and looking forward to heading to France to, to face Toulon Emma thank you ever so much for joining us we'll talk to you again next week if that's alright of course <laughs> This is the Exeter Chiefs podcast. Still to come, uh, we'll have a quick preview of uh, this weekend's humongous game. How do you pronounce it correctly, Chubby? Against? Humongous? Oh, sorry, no. Clement Averne. Oh, oh, wow. Check you out. Well, that's why you're on the pitch every week and I'm not. Exactly, from Clement Ferrell. And uh, what we're going to do now, though, is get our mystery guest on. So we started this last week with Alec and Harry. We need a little bit of music to get you in the mood. Right, Right. yes. You need to guess who it is. Okay. Well, the clue is what? Sausages. Sausages. That's your clue. Can you guess who it is? Is it Luke Cowan-Dickey, sponsored by Westaway Sausages? Oh, I like that, but no. Oh. Um... The boys had um, a Ryder Cup day at Woodbury Park last week, and I believe Tony Walker, the beast, the beast. won the sausage making competition. It, it, I saw Tony Walker at the weekend, but it wasn't him. It's not him. No, sausages. I don't know. Then I'm at a complete okay. loss. Okay, uh, he didn't play on the weekend, but he was there on the pitch. On the and pitch, and he played for Braves last week. Is it James Short? No, no, this isn't going anywhere. No. Is His dad owns a butcher's. Da- Jack Maunder. Yes! Oh. God, <laughs> took my time there. This is the Exeter Chiefs podcast. You were captain last week for the Braves then, mate. Yeah, on um, Monday night, yeah. I was uh, lucky enough to get the armband, which was brilliant. Tell us about what that felt like then. Oh, yeah, it was, it was awesome. Um, I got told in uh, in the gym on the the Friday uh, before the game uh, by Ricky, um, which so I was a bit shocked at first. It didn't really sink, sink in until I got home and told mum and dad about it. Dad um, must have been proud being a former captain himself. Yeah, dad was very proud. I think he was, I think he was shocked as well. I don't think he knew what to quite <laughs> say as well. So um, yeah, it was, a, it was a pretty proud moment. Um, and then I was just, the nerves just doubled until Monday. So it was a pretty, it felt like a long, long three days. I followed the uh, the scoreline on on Twitter, and it was uh, it was fairly all of you you boys. Then, can you tell us a bit about what it was like on the pitch? Exactly, that like the forwards absolutely dominated. Um, the the scrum was brilliant. Uh, the line out drive was unbelievable. I think we scored pretty much all of our tries. I think every I, thought, I think forwards scored all of our tries. So, which just which sums up the game really. Um, and you have people like Ben White who was on fire. Um, scoring tries. Uh, what was it like being the, the, the captain for players you've been watching from the stands as an academy player? Yeah, 
Yeah, it was weird. It was, it was obviously, like Tom Johnson was on the pitch. He's obviously yeah, an <laughs> yeah. international, and I'm I'm trying to tell him, um, <laughs> you know, <laughs> what the next decision is when all I want to do is ask him <laughs> yeah. what, what he thinks we should do. So yeah, it's awesome. Um, it's a great experience, and it'll, hopefully, it'll be great for. It's a great learning curve for um, for myself as a player. News, views, and behind-the-scenes chat from Sandy Park. This is the Exeter Chiefs podcast. We segue nicely out of the mighty Jack Warner. He's a nice guy, isn't he, Jack? Oh, good chap, good chap. And and by absolutely no way a charity throw there to give him the armband. That is, you know, work in progress, I, I can see. I didn't uh, really let you get a word in edgeways there, did I? Sorry about Well, that. you know, I was sitting back and enjoying the show. Segwaying from Jack into this weekend, you are going to do the preview of all previews for this weekend, aren't you? Well, I'll, I'll summarise where we are thus far. <laughs> right, you up a bit. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> okay, in 30 seconds, I've got you a different clock for this one, so it's a bit, it's different. Right. Not like the beginning. Uh, this weekend, we host Clément, uh, and uh, our man Chubby is going to preview the game for us now. Okay, so we have met them four times in Europe in the past, um, before Sunday, and we've come up short three of those times, biggest loss being 46-3 in 2013. However, Learning experience. at home, we beat them 31-14 in 2015, yeah. and so we are improving there. Our chief point scorer is Gareth Steenson thus far, and the Clement uh, main point scorer, Morgan Parra, they have got quality throughout, expect Strettle, Abendanen, Nakasaki, it's going to be an amazing game to watch. Don't stay at home. Come and watch the game at Sandy Park. We'll see you there. Thanks for listening. Your behind-the-scenes access to Sandy Park with Rhino and Bentos. Thank you. The Exeter Chiefs podcast.